Well, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Eddie here. Hey, there's our Warriors for Jesus. Wow, our <laughs> this is Tuesday in God's holy week. Come on. Where's the rest of his warriors? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How you doing out there, Pastor Tim? I'm doing great, Rev. God bless you and God bless everybody listening to this podcast. Love y'all. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are just so excited. Tuesday of Holy Week. We're going in, y'all. We're going back into Luke. We're going over to John. Where else are we going, Tim? I think we're going into Mark, going too, right? Okay. Amen. Going into Mark, and we might even, I don't know, if we got time, we might tap on Matthew a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so exciting. So exciting for us, and we just thank God for each and every one of you that are following on Facebook and YouTube. You got to know. You got to know in your hearts. You're the best part of this ministry. Amen. And we are here for you all week long. During the Lord Jesus' holy week. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we got a word from the Lord this morning. Amen. Tim's trucking through Montana. So he's got to keep his eyes on the road. Amen. And I'm just Amen. kneeling before the Lord. Amen. And I'm like, Lord, what do you, what, what's on your heart? What do you want to share? What do you want to tell your people today? You know, we got miracles coming. That was yesterday, the Lord said that he would honor uh, each and every one of us with miracles this week. <laughs> Amen. And so they're flowing. And while we're on that, don't let me forget what he said this morning, Tim. It's just so exciting. But Drina got a miracle. She's been waiting for this miracle six years. Now, I'm not at liberty to discuss it, I don't think. You see what I'm saying? Because of the technicalities, the location of where these miracles flowed yesterday. But she was in tears. And there was others in tears to see what was on their hearts come to pass. Miraculously, you know, you know where she works. And that's why I'm not sure how much detail I can give on this particular program. You know, you can't just release everything that happens up in that place. You see, but she got it, y'all. And we just want to say thank you, Jesus. His word for us today, amen, is I got this. And I'm like, wow, Lord. So each and every one of us got issues. We got situations, circumstances in our lives. And the Lord wants you to know he's got it. He's got it. Amen. And he says he refuses to let any of us go. He's got us. And will not, cannot, shall not let us go. Are you with me? So Amen. no matter what it is, that's your struggle. The Lord wants you to know. Even if he hasn't answered your prayer yet, he's got it. He knows. Amen. And we just want to say thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That even our smallest of problems are your greatest. <laughs> when it comes to our lives, our smallest concerns are his greatest. So just lift up those holy hands and thank him. Amen. Because he's got it. He's heard your prayers. And let's just watch it as we continue in this holy week what he's going to do. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even the kids excited, y'all. They throwing popcorn and everything else out over there. But if you're on YouTube and you'd like to reach out to either one of us, Tim's up all night, I'm up all day. Amen. Amen. If you're looking for Tim, go over to Facebook and search Tim Heather, message Tim. He'll get right back to you. If you're during the day, you're looking for me. Amen. Uh, come over to Facebook. Search Rev Eddie Wiggins. 
Now, on Facebook, Rev Eddie is one word. No space, no dash, no dots, no periods. Just Rev Eddie Wiggins and message me. And we'll exchange numbers. That way we can talk it out, chat it out, cry it out, shout it out, pray it out, knowing all the while in our hearts that are. <laughs> Almighty God, our all-knowing, all-seeing, all-loving, miracle-working God is going to work it out. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> A shout out to our favorite island in the whole wide world, the island of Mindanao, and all the beautiful people there. Uh, Mindanao's in the Philippines. All the beautiful people there from Dipalog City to Polanco, from Polanco to Dipaton City, Dipaton City to Barangay, Districts 1, 2, and 3, all the way up into those mountains. We thank God for all of you. And I don't know if I told you, Tim, Pastor Larry and his daughters have been following the podcast. Amen. And Amen. just wanted to say thank you. Pastor Larry, actually, I think he came in on the Bible study or he came in, maybe it was uh, Palm Sunday. He one of these. He came in on the Bible study. He came in on the Bible study and just wanted to say thank you. Amen. And I met Pastor Amen. Larry and his beautiful family. Amen. And I Amen. mean, it was beautiful. And I want to tell you something about his daughter, Jaira. She was leading the uh, praise and worship that night. I came into his church to give him a testimony. Amen. And this little girl closed her eyes and got in the spirit. The anointing came down, and oh, did they sing from their hearts. I mean, it's that real praise. You can feel that real praise. It's not entertainment. This is praise from the heart. Amen. And it hit me hard. Amen. And I just fell in love with Pastor Larry, his entire family. Amen. And all his precious daughters, they were all on the praise team. Amen. And they just made me feel so welcome. I just thank God for all. <laughs> all the beautiful people, beautiful people we met while we were there. And we can't wait to get back and be a blessing. Amen. We thank God for the mighty KISS FM 90.1 on your FM radio dial. Amen. And our two favorite DJs in the whole wide world, Joe Ryan and Woody Boy, a.k.a. Dr. Love. It's time for the healing hour on the Mighty Kiss FM Polanco 90.1 on your FM radio dial. We just thank you, Jesus, for all those loving people of yours over there that we got a chance to meet. They, they share their lives with us. We got to share our lives with them. Thank you, Jesus, and keep your mighty hand of protection upon all of them in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep them all lifted up in our prayers at the mighty Kiss FM Polanco. Amen. Let's also continue to pray for Pastor Nelia's uh, powerful, powerful ministry with her best friend, Pastor Mary Jane Polare as they are just all over the place, from Dibalog City all the way up into those mountains, doing a thing for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, looking for the lost. It was because of my relationship with Pastor Nelia, we got to the Philippines. She introduced me to Pastor Larry. A man, her husband, Bishop Rinaldo, introduced me. These, Pastor Larry came under uh, Pastor Rinaldo, uh, Bishop Rinaldo. Amen. And so he had made many pastors in his lifetime. Amen. I knew Pastor Neely when she was a teenager before she got married to Bishop Rinaldo. And she was on fire then. She was on the praise team and we were sharing music back and forth. And they're singing the same songs we do. Amen. And they do it in their language. And so we're just exchanging songs online, becoming friends. She heard my testimony, asked if she could print it and distribute it. I'm like, oh yeah, do your thing, girl. Amen. I sent my book over there. She used to use it to keep the kids in line during Bible study. <laughs> Amen. 
she'd read him a little bit. And then if they were good, she'd read him a little bit more and then save some for the next day so she could keep them in line. I mean, just beautiful spirits. We thank God for all of them. Let's keep them all lifted up in our prayers, along with Charlotte and Dale down under on the beautiful continent of Australia. Let's keep them and their ministry lifted up in our prayers, along with Samanga and her ministry over in Zambia, Africa, and Minister Deborah Atwell and her ministry on that beautiful, hot, smoking island of Trinidad, Tobago. She is just on fire trying to save everybody on that island, Tim, and they can't get away. It's an island. Where are you going to go? Amen. But let's keep her and her ministry lifted up in our prayers along with Magoda Stanley and his on fire ministry over there in Uganda, Africa, and our Texas crew, Nick and Patricia, and that powerful, powerful prison ministry they're doing for the Lord. Ten men and women prisons per week. Come on now. And their friends and ours, Pastor Mike and Pastor Joel, at that beautiful Victory Outreach Ministry in beautiful downtown Fort Worth, Texas. It's just on fire, y'all. And we thank God for all of them. And we want to keep praying for all of them and Pastor Joel and his wife's six-day-a-week prison ministry. Amen. A shout-out, and let's keep praying for Sam Knight. Hey, Sammy, we love you, man. And let's keep our spiritual mentors, teachers, coaches, Coach Randy Lowe and his lovely wife and family and all their family, relatives and loved ones, and Coach Gekka. Yeah, hey, Coach. I see you up on the wall behind the light there. We just thank God for Coach Gecker and his lovely wife, Dr. K, and their ministry family, relatives and loved ones. Let's keep Anthony and Jamal lifted up in our prayers down on those beautiful streets of Atlanta, Georgia. Let's keep our brother in Christ, Rod, lifted up in our prayers. Amen. And my sisters, Karen and Jan, and my Auntie Annette, my nephew Michael, and my niece Elena. And we're praying for Karen, totally healed from head to toe in every area of her body. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Sarah and Captain Haynes and their powerful ministries lifted up in our prayers. Amen. And we're praying for Sarah, totally healed from head to toe in every area of her body. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep praying for Dorothy from YouTube, and her dad and son, Lee, Pastor Jody, and her powerful ministry, and Gail and Tex. Oh, we just thank God for our Gail and Tex, and let's continue to pray for their grandson, Mateo, totally healed, delivered, and restored in Jesus. Precious and mighty name. A shout out, and let's keep praying for Jay Clark. Hey, Jay, God bless you. Happy Holy Week to you. Let's keep Cheyenne and her children lifted up in our prayers along with Helena Gore. Hey, Miss Helena and Ladera Turner. Hey, Ladera. We thank God for you, girl, and all that you're doing in and throughout this ministry. We thank you, Jesus, for your mighty hand of protection upon Ladera and her entire family, especially her sister and her miracle granddaughter. And Lord, let only your mighty and perfect will be done in each and every one of their lives. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's keep evangelist Tammy and her powerful ministry and her daughter lifted up in our prayers. Amen. Got to pray for these kids now. Amen. Amen. Along with Ashley and her daughter. We thank you, Jesus, for your mighty hand of protection upon Ashley and her daughter. And Lord, just touch the hearts of each and every one of Ashley's family members that they too may fall madly in love with you and serve you wholeheartedly for the rest of their days in Jesus' precious and mighty name. A shout out and let's keep praying for Lucia and Sasha. Lucia over there in Ireland and Sasha. Over there near England, we thank God for the both of you, and we want to continue to pray for Lucia's sister Martina 
and her brother John. Let's pray for April and her children, whom are Bradley, Emma, Kyle, and Gracie, her very talented and skilled husband John, her nana Sandy, totally healed from head to toe. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, her aunt Sandy for her salvation, healing, and deliverance, and April's prayers that all her kids, all her children and family would fall madly in love with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and serve him the rest of their days. And we touch and agree right now it is done in Jesus' precious and mighty name. A shout out to our beloved Jesse. We thank God for Jesse. And we want to continue to pray for Jesse's family, especially his mom and uncle, that they too we're coming to the true knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This word, serve him, fall in love with him for the rest of their days in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And let's keep our truth warrior, Lene, and her ministry lifted up in our prayer. She reached out this morning, Tim, almost had me in tears. She prayed for us, thank God for us, and just prayed for us and this ministry. Wow, it was so beautiful. I just thank God for Lene. Let's continue to pray for her children, her mom, Linda, her dad, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, her home, her business, and her finances. Lord, bless her like never before. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. And now, Miss Miracle Girl. <laughs> Miss QS. A quiet storm. Adrena Turner. Oh, we just thank God for... We thank you, Jesus, for Adrena and all you're doing through her. We thank you for healing her and their dad from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet in every area of their bodies. We thank you for every miracle you've poured out in their lives. Thank you, Jesus. And, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for shielding and protecting protecting her in every way as she ministers uh, to all those. I mean, just pouring out every blessing that you've placed in her into those that you've placed before her. And it's life-changing, Lord. We just want to say thank you for that. And we want to thank God for Adrena's cousin Wanda and just pray that the Lord Jesus would touch each and every one of their hearts and mend them like only he can at the loss of Wanda's son toward the end of, end of last year. Let's keep my boy Brian lifted up in our prayers along with my boy John Fowler. Amen. Also, E.S. from YouTube. How you doing, E.S.? And Scott Woodall. Amen. And we're praying, Lord, for lots of miracles this week in uh, Scott Woodall's family. We thank you for everything that you've done for Scott, how far you've brought him, and knowing in our hearts, <laughs> you ain't done. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for all you're doing for his sister, his wife, Ray, and uh, Barney, and all those you have him ministering to. We denounce every spirit out of that family that is not of you, of anger and rage, of uh, uh, paranoia and depression and anxiety, all of that. We rebuke it all, Lord. That ain't from you. We rebuke it right now in the mighty name of Jesus and ask that only your quality be placed in each and every one of them in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And let's give a shout out and send some love, Tim. Come on, can we send some love to God's thunder twin? <laughs> we thank God for you, thunder twins. We love you, and we thank God for all he's doing in your lives. We thank you, Jesus, for healing them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet in every area of their bodies. And we thank you for your delivering power in every area of their bodies. And Lord, the twins have just been blessing your daughter, Kathy. We thank God for that. Use them, Lord, for your glory and heal Kathy's hip in the mighty name of Jesus, whole and complete. Amen. And Lord, look in on Jamie. Just touch him, Lord. Their seven-year-old nephew. Heal him, restore him, and deliver him whole and complete. 
in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Pastor Tim lifted up in our prayers. Amen. He's just over there so quiet looking at the beautiful views he's seeing in Montana. <laughs> you here, Tim, or did I lose you? There you are. I'm still here. Yeah, I'm just enjoying God's beauty. Yeah. And he's uh, no. he wants to share a song with all of us in this ministry. I got the text. I'll put I'll load it up on uh, our Facebook well, page. Are, no, that's not the that's not the song. That's actually just a couple of photos that I took out here. Oh. Good. We'll put them up too. God's beauty. Amen. Mm-hmm. Share what the Lord is sharing with you, Pastor. Oh yeah. <laughs> Amen. I mean, it's just, it's amen. I've just, I've, I've missed it out here seeing the mountains covered with pine trees and snow and yeah, yeah, you know, it's just beautiful. Wow. Okay. You keep on trucking, baby. That could amen. be a song. No, it yeah. probably wouldn't work. Anyway, <laughs> let's keep past it, Tim and his travels lifted up in our prayers, traveling grace that only the Lord can provide. Let's keep praying for his lovely wife Heather. His beautiful daughters, Jaden and Haley. Got to keep these kids lifted up in our prayers. Amen. Let's pray Amen. for Christina with a K. Christ in her heart and Christ in her name down in beautiful downtown Arkansas. And she's at her new job. She got her miracle. Amen. This week, yesterday was her first day. And I mean, what a blessing this job is. I'll, I'll get her to come on and testify. Amen. But we thank you, Jesus, Amen. for your mighty hand upon Christina. And we want to continue to pray for her, her, her son, her grandmother, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, and every good thing that Christ has put on her heart to do for God's kingdom. Amen. Let's pray and thank God for all those down under on the beautiful continent of Australia. We got Paris and Julie and Margaret and Tyler and Wang Guien from Melbourne, Australia. Zarlia and Martin and Paris and Julie and John and Joshua and Jordan and Mariano. Let's keep praying for uh, Laura from YouTube and her daughter, Micah. Micah, you're coming out of this better than you went in with a Christ-like mind, a sound mind filled with love and power in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Gene from YouTube lifted up in our prayers along with Robert Minnick and Ikina from Houston, Texas, and our beloved Ken and Cindy. Amen. We thank you, Jesus. For Ken and Cindy, we thank you, Ken and Cindy, for all you're doing in and throughout this ministry. Where will we be without you? Amen. And we thank you, Jesus, for Ken. We thank you for Cindy. We thank you for their marriage. Lord, just light them up. Honeymoon time again. Get them in trouble, Lord. And for each of their children, all their family, relatives, and loved ones, their home, and their places of employment and pour them out a financial blessing that will knock their socks off in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Carly from YouTube lifted up in our prayers. <coughs> <coughs> Along with Pick a Moon from India. A great job, a high-paying job, and a beautiful, gorgeous, magnificent Christian husband from her tribe. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's continue to pray for Marvin Cage, Helen Geddes, Leah Henderson, and her entire family, my girl Charlie, as well as thank you, Jesus, for your mighty hand of protection upon Kelly and her five-year-old son. No more abuse in Jesus' precious and mighty name, healing in their hearts from any abuse they may have already suffered in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And now our beloved Anna from Alabama. <laughs> we just thank God. We thank you, Jesus, for sharing Anna, her beautiful husband, Terry, with us all, her family, her beautiful daughter, Valerie, uh, Valerie's children, Odie and Atlas. We thank you, Jesus, for them all. And all that you're doing for them, we thank you for your mighty hand of protection and healing Anna from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, healing Terry, her husband, 
from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. And we thank you, Jesus, for your salvation, healing, and deliverance like the world has never seen before for Anna's son-in-law in Jesus' precious and mighty name. God bless you, Anna. Let's continue to pray. Did you want to say something, Pastor Tim? Yeah, I also want to ask the Lord to uh, set uh, Anna's neighbors straight and stop trying to encroach on personal boundaries. Yeah, yeah. yeah in no. Jesus' precious and mighty name, touch that man's heart and let him know that Anna is God's daughter. Treat her as such. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. And... We want to continue to pray for peace and healing in Christ-like minds for Raven, Shiloh, and Harley. Let's continue to pray for glory in all her children, her husband, and her brother, Vincent. Lord, we just ask that you would touch her husband's heart and kidneys, make them just like new. And Vincent needs a miracle in his mind, a Christ-like mind, a sound mind filled with love and power, and let your delivering power go forth into that VA hospital. Break every bond, every yoke that the enemy has on him. He comes out of there, Adderall free in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Send your people to minister to Vincent's bedside, and please remove the blinders from the Stephen family. Let's continue to pray for Lakeisha and her ministry son and family, my spiritually adopted family, Michelle, my girl Angelina, Gilbert, and Mia. Lord, have your way in each and every one of their hearts, minds, souls, and spirits. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's continue to pray for minister prophetess Laura Solis and her ministry and family, uh, peace and forgiveness like never before throughout her ministry and family. And let's continue to pray for Laura's son, George, her daughter, Adrena, and her cousin, Violet, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep praying for John Garcia from YouTube, totally delivered from drugs, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And let's lift up Hermann from Stockholm, Sweden. Lord, lead him to a spirit-filled church where he will fall into your arms and remain there in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Ashley and Jet lifted up in our prayers. And Jahan from England. Oh, we just thank you, Lord. Yeah, you kids can't wait to get over there in her cabinet. Watch out, girl. <laughs> They're looking at maps to see if there's a road from California to England. <laughs> Amen. They're going to backpack it and get over there, raid your pantry and kitchen. But we thank God for you, girl. Young warrior, you are just such a blessing to this ministry. And we're praying for your miracle. Oh, we want it right now, Lord, that you would unblock the glands in her eyelids that they would release their precious oils to moisten her eyes. Whole and complete in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Tina McCoy from Powell, Wyoming, lifted up in our prayers, a Christ-like mind, a sound mind filled with love and power. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's pray, pray for Clara from YouTube and her sons, Daniel and Gino, totally delivered from tobacco in Jesus' name. Let's keep Tim's sister, Amanda, lifted up in our prayers, a miracle in her tummy, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's keep Alonzo Holloway and Reddick up in our prayers for their court date. Fred, Tiffany, the man that will be saved, and our beloved Derek over in Virginia and his entire family. We just thank God for you, Derek, and all you're doing in and throughout this ministry. What a blessing you are. And we want to continue to pray for your family, especially your brother and your mother. Amen, that they too will come into the true knowledge of this word, this gospel of Jesus Christ, fall in love with our Lord and serve him for the rest of their days. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, let's continue to pray for Boyd Lamar from YouTube. His own place, a nice place, a safe place, a great job, and healing in his heart. 
like only our Lord and Savior can do. Let's keep Chris and her husband and all her family, relatives, and loved ones over in Kenya, Africa, lifted up in our prayers, especially her brother Benedict, for his salvation, healing, and deliverance from drugs, alcohol, and lifestyles not pleasing to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he too would fall madly in love with Jesus and serve him for the rest of his days in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Thank you for your mighty hand of protection upon Angelo Highsmith. Let's continue to pray for Al Battle, James Mayer, and Cody, all delivered from drugs and any spirit that is not of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's keep Mario lifted up in prayer for his salvation. We're praying against the spirit of anger and rage throughout this ministry, each and every one of our homes, families, relatives, and loved ones, and our workplaces. In Jesus' precious and mighty name, I shout out and let's keep praying for Auntie Helen. Hey, sis. Smells like chicken and dumplings to me. Amen. <laughs> That'd be good about now, wouldn't it, Tim? <laughs> Especially up here in this cold weather, you got that right. What's the temperature where you're at? Well, let's put it to you this way. It ain't double digits. Yo, oh, single letters. Yeah. <laughs> single numbers. Hey, man. Yeah, it's man. four. <laughs> four degrees. Ow. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's put it to you. Hey, I'll tell you what. You can guess one through nine, and you can only get eight uh, answers wrong. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cold. Amen. Yeah, amen. And let's pray for warmth quickly in Jesus' name. Let's keep Michelle Vanal and all her ministries lifted up in our prayers. And our beloved Ronnie. Now, Ronnie, these kids that are always shouting out to you every day, they've plotted it out on the map. Now, they know how to get to your house, girl. <laughs> And you posting pictures and everything else. Got all that family over there. Oh, yeah, they're going to come raid your place. Amen. We thank God. We thank you, Jesus, for our beloved Ronnie and all she is to this ministry. What a powerhouse of a daughter you have. And, Lord, we just ask right now a miracle of healing in her body. Her daughter, too, Viviana. A miracle of healing in both of their bodies from head to toe and every area of their bodies in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Let's continue to pray for Clarissa from Austin, Texas. And these kids have already plotted a map to Texas, Clarissa. <laughs> Amen. They, they want some of that real beef like I have when I was down there. Uh, with Nick and Patricia and Pastor Mike and Pastor Joe. Yeah, they got some good beef out there. But let's keep Clarissa lifted up in our prayers over there in Austin, Texas, as well as Tangra from Houston, Texas, and Chris from Wyoming, totally healed and delivered in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And Pastor Larry's ministry over there in Dipalog City, his lovely family, his beautiful wife, Amen. His beautiful daughters, Jaira, Micah, Angelica. Amen. Angelica healed in her heart right now in Jesus' name. Micah back in school in Jesus' name. And Father, just pour them out a blessing with abundance that all of their needs may be met in Jesus' precious and mighty name. We declare that the Spirit of God that you have freely given the Christian staff, inmates, and volunteers of Solano Prison and every prison causes them not to walk in a spirit of fear or timidity, but instead they walk in power, love, and a sound mind. We thank you, Almighty God, that because of your presence in them every place that the soles of their feet shall step becomes holy ground and belongs to them, your presence. Almighty God has caused them to become a great and generous blessing to everyone that enters these prison walls. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for demonstrating your amazing love towards them every day. We choose to walk in the example of love that Hosea showed towards Gomer, even in her unfaithfulness to him. We choose to move 
in an abundance of love, showing respect for all, even when we are faced with pain and unfaithfulness. We follow your example, Father, and walk in your way of love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for continually breaking off every chain off of every heart and setting each and every one of these captives free. Receive the prayers of incense rising up day and night from the men, staff, and volunteers on these prison grounds. Receive them on behalf of every family, person, and place represented. We declare, and thank you, Lord Jesus, that your joy, health, freedom, rest, protection, and the peace of God rule in the hearts of every person. God, you are always good. And the church said together, amen, amen, and amen. Who's ready for a word? Come on, grab your swords. Come on, young warriors, grab your Bibles. Amen. You know where I want to go? Because two of our gospel writers put this event during Holy Week. Amen. And so this should be included in our reading. Now, we're going back into uh, uh, Luke. Where were we? <laughs> We were in Luke 21 today, right? Amen. Yeah, we're in Luke 21. Amen. But let's go see how it's written over in Mark. I always like Mark. Mark Mark liked to fill in the blanks, put in some detail. Amen. And so in Mark chapter 14, amen, and we're going to start at verse 3. This is the woman who anoints Jesus with perfume. Now, you can put it in the comments, y'all, <laughs> if you can do it quickly. Who is this woman on her knees at the feet of Jesus, anointing him with this very expensive perfume? Amen? Amen. That's a test for you too, Tim. Who is this woman who would dare approach the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the creator of all things, the judge of all men, the one who laced those stars across the sky and they stay right where he wants them to stay, that made the moon and the sun and the earth and everything on it. Who is this woman? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And Come on. that would be... Come on. I'd like to know. Yeah. That would be Mary. That's right. What Mary? That was a common Mary name. Is the sister of Martha and Lazarus. Thank you. Very good. Amen. So we know Amen. that from our reading uh, Monday, yesterday, that he's entered into the area of Bethany. Amen. And so, uh, <coughs> let's see if I got a map here. I don't see one showing just how far. You guys can put it in the comments. Uh, just how far Bethany is. I believe it's just on the outskirts, maybe a mile, mile and a half away. Amen? And it's near the Mount of Olives. Now, it's thought. Bible doesn't say, but it's thought. Because during this entire week, Jesus is ministering at the temple. Every day. I said every day. And I know these disciples and the women in his ministry. Amen. Mary Magdalene and her crew. I know their hearts are pounding. Because they know at any moment these wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of religious law would just love to arrest their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Perhaps even all of them. It's that hostile, <laughs> y'all. Amen? But it's said, see, at the Mount of Olives, I want to draw you a picture. It's an olive grove. And just below this olive, olive grove lays a Gethsemane. Now, they're treating Gethsemane as a noun and capitalizing it as a location. But see, a Gethsemane is a workplace. 
Gethsemane translated comes back oil press. It's a room with many rooms carved out of limestone. Below ground is where they store the barrels of olive oil. But the olive press, the gath and the enemy, well, let me break that down for you. The enemy is this slight device. It's a trough. It's round. And there's a wheel that'll turn around, okay? Uh, uh, this wheel is heavy. It's made out of stone. And it crushes. Oh, you act like it don't crush. I said it crushes the olives to get that oil to flow. And the enemy itself is like a basin, amen, in which it has a hole in the middle. Now, the hole leads to underneath, rooms underneath. And this one room underneath, underneath the hole of the enemy, is a, a barrel. So as they're squeezing out that precious olive oil, they, it goes into a barrel underneath. When the barrel gets full, they cap it. They roll that baby into another room. There's many rooms under there. Now, this two how this oil press, is only used twice a year. So it's empty. What a beautiful hiding place for Jesus and his disciples to stay close to the city wall. It's less than a mile, I believe, outside those uh, uh, city gates. Amen? So not far from the temple at all. So Jesus and his disciples would be safe. They would be close, allowing Jesus to minister every day in the temple. Amen? And so it's not, they describe, it has a garden. Now what's the garden for? See, it's, treated as a noun, as a location of this special place. But see, any olive grove, you got to have a gath, gath enemy. Now, the gath is a, like a telephone pole. It's a real heavy pole. Now, after they clean out that trough, they put what remains of the olives that didn't drip. The oil dripped out. Well, they take those remains, they put them in baskets little flat square baskets and they stack them up one basket on top of another and then they take the gaff and they bring that gaff down on top and its weight squishes out any remaining oil so thoroughly by the way they get every drop of oil out of the, out of the remains it goes down the enemy, down that hole, and into the barrel below. And then what's left in those baskets is so dry, you can't get another drop out of them. Are you with me? And it's so dry, it can be used for kindling. They didn't waste nothing, y'all. It was like black folks with a pig. <laughs> from... from from root snooter to tutor, amen. They ate all that pig, amen. And so they don't waste nothing either. They will use that as kindling, you see. So every part of that olive had a use. And so uh, think about it. Gath enemy, Gethsemane. That's where that word comes from. It means oil press. And these are, it's a tool. And during the middle of the day, it's hot. Lunchtime, the lunch truck done came by and brought them some hot dogs. They got to have somewhere to eat. So they would go out in this garden. Maybe there's some tables, maybe some chairs that they can relax at. But there's a garden. And then you have the olive grove up above. You see. And so, uh, anyway, I just thought I'd break that down for you. Amen. Uh, verse, we're going to go to verse 3 in Mark chapter 14 to start off Tuesday of Holy Week. Amen. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made 
from Essence of Nard. Now, we'll get into this study guide and break all that down. Tara Montpellier sings this song. Amen. The Alabaster Jar. And so does C.C. Winans. There's others who have sang this song. You won't, you don't know the cost of my worship. You don't know the cost of my praise when I kneel before the master's feet. It's just beautiful. Amen. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Not only was this perfume expensive, this nard, but that jar, they didn't have a lot of glass workers back then, y'all. To have an alabaster jar was to have something. That was valuable. Amen? It meant nothing to her compared to her love for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as Tim pointed out, yes, this is Mary, uh, Martha's sister. Let's go to the study guide before I uh, change the page. Bethany is located on the eastern slope of the Mount of Olives. Amen? Jerusalem is on the western side. Amen? So it's very close, very close to the city of Jerusalem and those walls. Amen? This town was the home of Jesus' friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, who were also present at this dinner. Amen? The woman who anointed Jesus' feet was Mary, Lazarus, and Martha's sister. (laughs) <laughs> Amen. Now, Matthew and Mark place this event just before the Last Supper. They do. And we're going to go. Uh, uh, we may look at one of those today. We've got time. While John places it a week earlier, just before the triumphal entry. Amen. So they're not sure exactly. We figure it's got to be within this week. <laughs> so we, we include it in a holy week. Praise to Jesus this week. Amen. Amen. It's his week. It must remember, be remembered that the main purpose of the gospel writers was not to present an exact chronological account of Christ's life, but to give an accurate record of his message. Matthew and Mark may have chosen to place this event here to contrast the complete devotion of Mary with the betrayal of Judas the next event in both Gospels. Amen? Verse 4. Some of those at the table were indignant. Now we're going to go to another Gospel and see who is this master of indignation. Amen? But some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume? They asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly, according to Mark. Verse 6, but Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why criticize her for what? For her doing such a good thing to me. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, and you can help them whenever you want to. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I tell you the truth. Wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Mary Mary made it into the Bible. (laughs) The Hall of Fame. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I want to go over to, where did we want to go next? Matthew? And look at that. Yeah. Okay. Matthew 26 and 6 states, Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. 
The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, Why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. He knows where he's heading, y'all. Amen. I tell you the truth. Wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Let's go to this study guide on this uh, one, too. Amen. Matthew and Mark put this event just before the Last Supper, while John has it just before the triumphal entry or Palm Sunday. Amen. Of the three, John Amen. places this event in the most likely chronological order. We must remember that the main purpose of the gospel writers was to give an accurate record of Jesus' message, not to present an, an exact chronological account of his life. Matthew and Mark may have chosen to place this event here to contrast the complete devotion of Mary with the betrayal of Judas, which we'll get to Thursday. Amen. The next Amen. event they record in their gospel. Amen. This woman was Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, who lived in Bethany. Alabaster jars were carved from a translucent gypsum. These jars were sold to hold perfumed oil. All the disciples were indignant. But John's gospel singles out Judas Iscariot. As especially so <laughs> indignant. Amen. So uh watch this. Let's go over to John. Amen. Amen. Let's go see what John has to say about this. Amen. Let me find Luke and John. Here it is. And nope, that's our lesson today. Ah. Here it is in John. Let's get that. Amen. So you'll find this in John chapter 12 and verse 1. John 12 and 1, the gospel of John. So he says six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany the home of Lazarus. So that would have made it on the Saturday or Friday before the triumphal entry, Palm Sunday. Amen? The other two got it in that week. Amen? So we're not sure of the exact date, but in this ministry, this is important. And this is Jesus' holy week. So we want to include this in our learning. Six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. Hello. A dinner was prepared in Jesus' honor. Martha served, and Lazarus was among those who ate with them. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive, Perfume made from the essence of nard. Now I have an asterisk there. Amen. Amen. And uh, it was a litra or 327 grams of expensive perfume. Amen. And she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance. Now, the other gospel writer says she poured it over his head. Amen? She anointed him from head to toe with that the best right. thing she could provide for her Lord, the most expensive thing she had. And the people there recognized it, y'all. They're like, girl, what you doing? I know that stuff. That stuff is so rare, so expensive. You can only get it in Macy's special order or whatever. They recognize how expensive this is to her. Oh, Lord. 
Oh, Lord. You see, she's driven by the Spirit of God. She don't care about the cost of this. There's nothing she's not willing to give up <laughs> for her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do you see where her heart is? Amen. It don't mean nothing to me, but you mean everything to me. I'll pour out my best on you, Lord. Oh, come on. See, see, you stop it, Ladair. I see the way you're looking at me. Amen. You trying to get me to preach up in here. This is a sermon all by itself. Can we get to the place with God where we will pour out our best at his feet? Because he's our everything. Nothing holds a value on this earth more than our salvation and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what he did for us on that cross. Can we get to that place? Are you with me? See, stop it. I see you, Ronnie. Stop it. <laughs> All right? I only came to teach. I did not come to preach today. Amen? The house is filled with the fragrance of this perfume. Now, this is like a movie, y'all. You see it going by. I see you munching out there. You got your popcorn, your little finger snacks. Keep it going. Amen. Yeah, kids got there. Vision this scene. Vision this scene. Amen. Amen. But verse 4. But Judas Iscariot. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay. The disciple who would soon betray him said that perfume was worth a year's wages. That breaks down from the Greek at 300 denarii. Amen? A denarius Amen. was equivalent to a laborer's full day's wage. It's a lot of money in his sight. And it would be. It would be. Let's keep reading. Why is he so concerned? Why does he consider this a waste? When to Jesus, he's like so blessed by her worship and what she's doing. She's anointing him for his burial. How does she know? The disciples are so clueless. They're running around out of their minds, I guess. They're not seeing the significance of what she's doing. Oh, but Judas sees something. This was money he could have stole from the treasury if he'd have got his hands up. Girl, what you doing with that jar? You don't need that. Get after us. This ministry needs that money. Let me have that. Let me have that. <laughs> not thinking about the ministry. Not thinking about Jesus' teachings or his work. Otherwise, Judas would have asked Jesus for deliverance from being a thief. Amen? Verse Amen. 4. Continued. It should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he cared for the poor. He was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. Jesus replied, Leave her alone. She did this in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. In other words, Jesus not telling them to, ne to neglect the poor ever. Neither should any ministry. Mm -hmm. You can always do that work. That's what you're called to do. But what she's doing, <laughs> you ain't always going to have me, baby boy. What are you looking at? Let her do what she does. Amen? Let her Amen. continue. Verse 9, when all the people heard of Jesus' arrival, they flocked to see him. We were talking about that, Tim. Why is it just them in the house? Maybe the neighborhood didn't know Jesus has come. You see what I'm saying? When all the people heard of Jesus' arrival, they flocked to see him and also to see Lazarus, the man Jesus had raised from the dead. He's a walking miracle, y'all. Amen. As most of us in this ministry are, walking miracles. I know darn well I ain't supposed to be here. <laughs> Amen. Tim knows he ain't supposed to be here. He died on, a, on an operating table. 
The Lord said, no, Satan, <laughs> not now. Now, I have use for this one. Verse 10. Amen. Here comes church folks, y'all. Sneaky little snake. Come on, let's read verse 10. Then the leading priest decided to kill Lazarus too. Two? Who else they going to kill? Jesus. Oh, these some plotting evil folks, ain't they? Listen to this. Yeah. Then the leading priest decided to kill Lazarus too, for it was because of him. It's his fault. It was because of him that many of the people had deserted them <laughs> and believed in Jesus. Amen? Amen. They so jealous, it's eating them from the inside out. They don't even care anymore about their posture in front of the people. They're that evil. We're taking the gloves off now. We'll kill him too. What purpose would you have to kill Lazarus? Everybody already knows Jesus raised him from the dead. But in your wickedness, you want to erase the miracle by murdering Lazarus? Oh, how hot will hell be for you? Jesus even asked them on another occasion, how will you miss hell? <laughs> Amen. Let's get into today's uh, uh, chapter. We're going back into chapter 21. Amen. And it's not very long. That's why we wanted to kind of cover other things because actually if we finish 21 today, we're going to be in Thursday. And we're not missing a day, y'all. So let's just get a piece of this today and call it quits. Amen? Okay, amen. 21 and 1 states, while Jesus was in the temple. See, I told you he in the temple. Every day. Thank you, Jesus. It's his last week in ministry before the cross. And look at him work. He just pouring it out, pouring it out. Every day going. Now the disciples, the women in his ministry, he got a crew of 20 of y'all. Seven women, 12 disciples. One of them's the devil. A sellout. Amen. Yeah, that'd be Judas. They have to know. They have to know. They're so close to the place that wants to kill Jesus. And they've proved their intentions before by killing all the prophets. Mm. All the messengers that Jesus just spoke about in the parable in front of the people at the temple speaking to these wicked Pharisees, Sadducees, teachers of religious law. You see? Oh, yeah. And so they got to be thinking in their minds, these Pharisees, these Sadducees, Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, his son-in-law, mm -hmm. another high priest, how much of this Jesus are they going to take before they say, you know what? Send the temple guards, arrest him, kill him. <laughs> They're trying to save face in front of the people, y'all, as being so righteous, holy rollers. Oh, we just love the Lord. We love God. We serve God. And we live the way God has ordered us to live. Uh-huh. About that. No. <laughs> okay. Amen. So while Jesus is in the temple, verse 1 of Luke 21, I'm reading, and I've been reading, sorry, uh, out of the New Living Translation for your ease. While Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts in the collection box. That's why I've always honored the Lord with my tithes and offerings, because I knew in my spirit he's watching. I need financial blessings so bad. I remember getting out of hell. I was broke as a joke. If I ain't got it, I'm looking on the ground, walking in, seeing if I can find some pennies 
or something, so I didn't come empty-handed. I wanted to give so bad. And when he blessed me with a job, my own business, the heavenly handyman, amen, I'm taking my tithe out, and I'm putting it in the left pocket with my bottle of oil, holy oil. That pocket became holy oil. <laughs> it don't have nothing in that pocket except what belongs to the Lord. And sometimes the tithe pocket got bigger than my pocket that I could spend from. I wouldn't touch the Lord's offering, his tithe, ever. Now, I did find this scripture in the Old Testament where if you touch the Lord's money, I think you had to pay it back three times. And there were times I was in trouble. I needed gas, and I know I got a job tomorrow, so I'll take it out. I got to pay it back three times. This did not happen very often. <laughs> Amen. But Amen. knowing that Jesus is watching, I wanted to pay my time. I needed to. I needed him to bless the tithe and offerings because I needed money. Now, when we first started the Heavenly Handyman, this little, uh, actually toward the end of our 15, 14 year reign, uh, uh, that last crew, they were saying, we can't afford the tithe. I said, I can't afford not to. And we're a unit. We're one in God's eyes, his Heavenly Handyman. We all need to tithe. Just take it out. He'll bless us with so much work. We won't be able to uh, get to it all. We may lose some jobs because people don't want to wait. And the Lord did just that when we all started tithing. Tithing works. And I still tithe, y'all. Amen. So while Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gift in the collection box. So he's seeing, I've blessed you with all this. Let's see how much you bring back. Now, tithe was 10%. Amen? Mm -hmm. I heard, I don't know if it's true, but I heard the owner of Fish Filet, there, it's a Christian family-owned business. I heard he's uh -huh. tithing 90% now. 90. He's so rich. He don't even need money, y'all. That's pretty darn good right there. Amen. And 90% he's used putting back in the time. My God, my God. Wouldn't we all love to get in a place like that? Come on, Lord. <laughs> I know these kids do. Amen. <laughs> Verse 2. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. I have an asterisk there. She dropped in out of the Greek to lepta. It's the smallest of Jewish coins. It's like a penny, y'all. <laughs> that was me, y'all. <laughs> I remember them days. Amen. I love it when I had more than one coin because they can maybe make enough noise when they hit the tray that it sound like more <laughs> to those who are paying attention. And isn't that something, church folk? They just love to look and see what you're doing, what you're wearing, what you're giving. Amen. None of your business. God loves a cheerful giver. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's why what I've seen where they're going to continue to pass the bucket until they get what they're after, that's not allowing us to give from the heart. Before we left for church, we know they're going to take an offering. We know we got to pay our tithe. How much can we put in? Well, our, side, our tithes are set aside. That's 10% of what we made this week, so we got that. What are we going to give when they ask for an offering? Well, honey, we, we got these kids this week. We got soccer practice. It's going to be gas. We got to pay this week for the drinks and snacks and chips and stuff for the whole team. That's our turn this week. Let's give them $20. We, we can do that. Are you with me? And that's on their heart. 
And the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So when these wicked pastors keep continually passing around a plate, I saw a church lock the door and say, ain't nobody leaving until we get what, we're, what we need. They were building an east wing on the church. They had a thermometer up there on the stage showing how much they had raised <laughs> to get to their goal. And they passed that thing around three times. That's not allowing God's children to be chill forgivers. Now you're hurting them. You're going up into the, what they need to survive, what they need to provide. You took away that choice. The Holy Spirit already put on their hearts what to give, and now you just ruin that. You see, when they do that, so, verse 2 said, Then a poor woman, I'm sorry, a poor widow, she don't have a husband, may not have any kids to support her. She's that poor. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. Verse 3, I tell you the truth, Jesus said, This poor widow has given more than all the rest of them. How can this be? The rich were putting in. Truly, they put in more than two small coins in some people's minds. But Jesus said no. <laughs> the woman with the two coins has given more than all the rest of them. For they have given a tiny part of their surplus. In other words, he knows their finances because he blessed their finances. And he saw their giving. That's why the Bible said, but what you give, you shall receive. You want to be stingy with stuff, you see what I'm saying? Then God will bless you in a stingy way. You want to be generous in your giving, God will be generous in his blessing of your finances. Amen? And so, it says in verse 4, for they have given a tiny part of their surplus. Oh, they got so much extra. And the Lord knows it. But she, poor as she is, has given everything she had. And the Lord knew that. Or he wouldn't have said that. She has nothing else to give. But during this Passover celebration this week she came knowing she had to give knowing she don't have much to give but she gave all she had the two pennies that she had to the Lord and probably praying for a financial miracle now I saw a pastor from his heart bless a woman and it brought tears to my eyes I cried during the whole service I couldn't believe what was happening in front of my eyes, y'all. The woman had been living in her car with her three kids, and they're coming to the church service. They need a financial breakthrough. They're homeless, y'all. And she had come up on some money, and she's going to give it all to the church. And there's a gas station two blocks from the church. They go into that bathroom to change and clean up, wash up so they can be presentable in God's house. And somebody steals her car. And as they're stealing her car, they wreck into another car and then run away. She heard her car start up. She goes out that door. What are you doing? That's my car. He runs into a vehicle coming in the driveway just destroyed that vehicle and hers. Are you with me? All her stuff's in that car. Things just exploded and went from bad to worse. They got to walk to the church now. And she's got to deal with this other driver in insurance. Oh, she in the mess, y'all. But they made it to this church service. 
And the pastor's preaching and stops mid sentence and said, The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost just spoke. We got to stop y'all. There's a Stephanie here. Get up here right now. Lord wants to talk to you. You've only got half the story. Your life is a living nightmare. And he says it's only because you don't know the other half. You've only seen half of the situation. That woman dragged those kids up there in tears and gave her testimony of what had just happened. And that pastor called his secretary and said, go back to my office, write her a check for five grand right now. Then he called, this is a big church too, he called his uh, parishioners to come forward with donations. Okay? Then he said, somebody, in this congregation got an extra car and you got the keys and you can give it to her that she has transportation to get these kids back and forth to school. And somebody in this congregation here has got a room, something, some part of your house where this woman and her kids can move in your house and you're not going to charge her no rent. Well, it turned out <laughs> Look at God work. It turned out a gentleman did come up and hand over the keys to a car. Just straight out gave it to her and said the tank is full. Glory be to God. In donations, including the pastor's donation, that woman walked out of there with over $30,000 in cash. And there was an elderly couple that owned a home, and they had a, uh, you know, a garage in the backyard and a three-bedroom apartment on top of that garage. And they said, you know, we've been, we didn't know what to do with this. Most of our families moved away. It is so nice. It's got its own kitchen. You know what I'm saying? Got three bedrooms. And they can have it. We will not charge them, nor will we charge them for the utilities. It's on us. <laughs> that that I witnessed, I'm crying like a baby. I just can't believe this miracle move of the Lord and how he used this church to bless this woman in her worst moment in life. And I thought of this woman with the two coins because that's what this Stephanie was doing. She was coming in to give her last because she knew this scripture and she needed a miracle from the Lord. Bam, just like that. Somebody needs this shot. Amen. Verse 5 says, Some of his disciples, began talking about the majestic stonework of the temple and the memorial decorations on the wall. So now they're looking at the temple. We've talked about this in other podcasts. Here's where it's placed in Holy Week. Amen. So uh, they're looking at this temple. This temple was so beautiful, so high up in the air. Herod had came in poured mad loot, <laughs> mad money to appease the Jews into this temple. Amen? Beautiful marble stairs. You could walk on marble in the courtyards, the walls with marble on the outside. This was a glistening gem. And Jerusalem being up on that hill, the Temple Mount, it could be seen for miles. Oh, they were so proud of the building. It was a swap meet, but something, something they could brag about. It wasn't used to meet God, to worship God, to pray to God. Oh, no. It was a swap meet, okay? And Jesus had already driven them out twice. 
And it's probably a swap meet again. Hopefully not, because he's in there teaching every day. He would know. Amen? So they're just waiting for something to happen to him so they can get their, their business going again. This is a big business building in their heart. This is where we make our money. You see? You weren't even allowed to go in the temple without paying the temple tax, so you couldn't come and worship God unless you paid a, temp a fee to get in. That's how corrupt they were. Amen? And so, verse 5 says, some of his disciples began talking about the majestic stonework of the temple and the memorial decorations on the walls. But Jesus said, the time is coming where all these things will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Now, remember, he's, he's, he describes this. The whole city's coming down. As he's coming in on the donkey, we did that Sunday. Oh, woe to you. And in just 40 years, Jesus' words came to pass. And Jerusalem and that temple were totally destroyed, not one stone on top of another in A.D. 70, the great siege of Jerusalem by Rome. And... Over a half million, like 600,000 Jews, died during this four-year four year siege. Amen? And so, verse 7 says, Teacher, they ask, when will all this happen? What sign will show us that these things are about to take place? Now, remember, we, we ripped this up in Matthew. Matthew really brings us. We're in Luke. Amen. And we'll go into a piece of it, and then we'll stop for the day. We lost him. He's driving through Montana. I know he's going through mountains and forests. See, I can't show you the picture on my phone because the uh, sound will start distorting. You're going to get a lot of feedback, but I'll put it up on my Facebook page. Well, we lost him there. Let's keep him lifted up in our prayers. Amen. So uh, let's go to the study guide of what we read about this woman. Jesus was in the area of the temple called the Court of Women. In this area were seven boxes in which worshipers could deposit their temple tax and six boxes for free will offerings like the one this woman gave. This woman was not only poor, but had few resources for making money. Her small gift was a sacrifice, but she gave it willingly. I got another study guide here. In contrast to the way most of us handle our money, this widow gave all she had to live on. When we consider ourselves generous, and giving a small percentage of our income to the Lord, we resemble those who gave a tiny, a tiny part of their surplus. Here, Jesus admired the woman's generous and sacrificial giving. As believers, we should consider increasing our giving, whether time, money, or talent, to a point beyond mere convenience or comfort. I heard someone say, give till it hurts. I've been there, y'all. I've done that. Knowing I'm not going to eat tonight, I'm feeding others so that they don't go to bed, you know, hungry in their tummy. Amen? I did that for years. Amen? I just couldn't bear to see these kids. I'm talking about Angelina and Gilbert now. Amen? I couldn't stand to see them hungry. And they'd ask on the way home, can we stop by Mi Angie? Can we stop by Miss Donald? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, girl. This is when they had a dollar menu. Yeah. Now I might have had three, four, five bucks so I could eat tonight. Right? But now I know I'm going to spend two plus tax. <laughs> Amen. Because I'm not going to let them be hungry tonight. 
And I'd be like, yeah, you got to get one thing from the dollar menu. Okay. I want chicken nuggets. All right. And Gilbert will want him a uh, cheeseburger. I think they even had a double cheeseburger for a buck back then. Amen. So I know. And it hurt. But the Lord kept me going. You know, I don't know how we're going to eat tomorrow. I don't even know how we're going to eat tonight. Amen. But the Lord has never let me go hungry. Now, I would choose to go hungry fasting. I would sacrifice for these kids. Amen. But the Lord had provided for me to eat. I just took it to feed them. Amen. So I know what they're saying in this study guide. A lot of you probably know too. I can help you, but this is going to sting. <laughs> this is going to hurt. But that's that sacrificial giving that the Lord admires. He loves that. Amen. And he will bless that. Amen. So I got another study guide. The temple the, the, the disciples were admiring was not Solomon's temple. Same design, y'all, but a lot different. Because don't forget, God gave David and Solomon the instruction on how to build his house and what his house was to be used for. Every material, every instrument in there, the exact measurements of how big the holiest of holies, the holy place, the most holy place, the courtyards, the altar, the instruments used on the altar, the great basin, what it's to be made of, many, many instructions. Amen? As to how God wanted his house where he would dwell among his people. But they was just as wicked back then as they are today. Even in Solomon's temple. You see what I'm saying? God had to let that baby be destroyed because they weren't coming to see God there. So proud of a building. We've got God's house in our land. Look at us, look at us. But you won't go in there and get alone with the Lord and praise the Lord, love on the Lord. Get at his feet. Pour out your best offering. Pour out your tears and wipe them off of his feet with your hair. They couldn't do that. Amen? So it says here, uh, the temple the disciples were admiring were not Solomon's temple. That had been destroyed by the Babylonians early in the 6th century B.C. This temple had been built by Ezra after his return from exile later in the 6th century when he finally got out of Babylon. <laughs> Amen? No, I think Babylon even desecrated one. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I think that was Babylon. Yeah, it was. They, they destroyed Solomon's temple. So this one's built by Ezra. Amen? And it's going to be destroyed too. Look how the building improperly used means nothing to God. Jesus just told his disciples, this baby's coming down. What you looking at? What you so proud of? Not one rock, not one stone will be sitting on top of another. It's totally going to be destroyed. And look at it. God allowed that. And there's never been another one since. Now they talking about building one. We got to see them pull this off. <laughs> there's a mosque sitting on the temple grounds today. That's how far away from God that nation has become. Amen? So this temple had been built by Ezra after his return from exile later in the 6th century B.C., desecrated by the Seleucids in the 2nd century B.C., re consecrated by the Maccabees soon afterward and enormously, enormously expanded by Herod the Great over a 46-year period. 
It was a beautiful, imposing structure with a significant history. But Jesus said it would be completely destroyed. This happened in A.D. 70 when the Roman army burned Jerusalem. Amen? So what we're going to do tomorrow is go into the last days. Now, we did this in our study for Revelation. We did this in our study before the book of Revelation. Amen? As we went through every gospel and grasped what Jesus described these last days would be like. Then we went to all the epistles and every book leading up to the book of Revelation describing the last days. Then we studied the book of Revelation verse by verse, intensely looking at these last days. Well, today in human history, we finally got there. We're in the last days, y'all. We're his bride. We're that last church. We went through the book of Acts, remember? Looking at the persecution that the church started with. How did they get through? Because we darn sure are going to be persecuted in these last days. So we went through the book of Acts, verse by verse, gleaning what we could on how and what attitude, what character we need to go through these as the last church to see him coming on the cloud. His last army, y'all. And now we're in the epistles. We've gotten up to 2 Corinthians. We'll be returning there next week after her Holy Week. Verse by verse, we're going to go all the way through this Bible in the New Testament back to the book of Revelation. I don't know where the Lord going to take us from there. Amen? But we're learning to walk now that we must walk now and <coughs> as we go through the tribulation, keep that walk. See what God's doing here in his ministry. Amen? So we'll get into that tomorrow. Amen? Uh, so we read through six. So we'll be starting tomorrow at verse seven in Luke 21. And we'll get through that real quick. And that'll keep us right on time, right on track for Monday, Thursday. And that's a long one, y'all. We It could be a three-hour podcast. So much happens on Monday, Thursday. Amen. From Jesus washing their feet, ministering to them, the Last Supper, the betrayal of Judas. Ends him over with a kiss. His experience with the Pharisees, Sadducees, the price of a slave he accepted for Jesus in a sack of silver. Amen. There's so much going on. Amen. The arrest, the Last Supper. You see what I'm saying? His, his trial in the garden and sweat and blood, y'all. That bleeding started before the cross for you, for me. We'll be getting into that Thursday. It's a lot. It's a lot. I asked the Lord, so should we go in a little bit early on Wednesday to get it? No. He wants it all done on Thursday. That, that took decision making from me. I'm like, yes, Lord. I don't have to worry about that no more. I know you will. So Thursday's going to be intense. And then we got Good Friday, Silent Saturday, <laughs> and then Resurrection Sunday. He's not here. Come on. Excuse me, ladies. Why are you looking for the living <laughs> in a place of the dead? You in the cemetery, girl. You do know that, right? Bubba, sit down. Ain't nobody called you. Oh, I'll tell you, we get it going good, and here come that nut. You really need to be drenched in holy oil this week. This is holy week, Bubba. Sit yourself down. Put the man down. Sit down act like you got some sense. 
He just couldn't keep quiet. Not even during Holy Week, y'all. Are you with me? But these kids, they love the Lord. They love the Lord. Amen? And they're painting all kind of pictures over there of, of Holy Week. Maybe we'll get to share something with you. We got uh, over at Anna's page, little Odie, she drew a picture to put over the uh, uh, house going in, into the house. Amen? So it's a busy week this week. Amen? And uh, we just want to give glory to Jesus all week. This is his week, y'all. But there's a lot of ministry. He's just pouring out. He's just going and going and going. Amen? Because this is it. This is his last week of ministry before the cross. Bringing that three and a half year ministry to a hill. <laughs> a hill called Golgotha. Where we get from that translation in English, Calvary. Going to Calvary, y'all. And believe me, Calvary's on his heart. Even during this week. Oh, he's thinking about it, y'all. That's why he told the disciples, and Judas especially, leave this woman alone. She knows what she's doing. I know what she's doing. And it's honorable what she's doing that she would anoint me for my burial. Because he knows y'all ain't going to be able to anoint me. There's some other women that think they're going to get into that tomb to anoint his body for burial. It's being done now. Because by the time y'all get there, <laughs> come on, y'all. He's not here. He has risen. My God, my God, what a week. What podcast we got in store. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you so much for this powerful, powerful, life-saving, life-changing, life-rearranging word that you have blessed us with today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bury it in our hearts. We're like barbed wire that it may remain in our heart for eternity in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Bless each and every one of those that are participating in your week, your holy week, Lord Jesus. Oh, they have so many needs, Lord, but you got a miracle for every need. Allow your miracles to come forth in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And speaking of miracles, Lord, some of these that you love and adore so much that you've drawn here today with purpose. They've been diagnosed by a doctor. They've been told they got this disease or this condition or this failure or that happening or this happening. Maybe multiple things going on in their bodies, Lord. But we know you are our healer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And you brought them here with purpose, Lord. <laughs> and we know what that purpose is, Lord, because I know your heart. And I'm going to speak it. He's pushing on me, y'all. He's trying to get at y'all. Amen. I feel it, Lord. I'm with you. I'm going to say it. We declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Even if the doctor told you you got multiple things wrong in your body, even if he told you or she told you there is no cure, uh-uh. We speak it right now in the mighty name of Jesus, each and every one of you. Heal. Whole and complete from the top of your heads to the soles of your feet in every area of your bodies right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of these, Lord, that you love and adore so much that you drew here today with purpose, they in bondage. Satan got yokes on them. They're chained up. They're prisoners. Prisoners in sin, Lord. This drug, that drug, it might be alcohol, it might be pornography, it might be gambling, all kind of stuff. There's all sorts of bondage, Lord, and you know each and every one of them and exactly how they're in bondage. But we're going to speak that yoke-breaking power right now in the mighty name of Jesus, no matter what it is, even if you, you're in bondage several times over in different areas of your life. Jesus wants you free. 
free right now. Right now. And we declare it right now. Every yoke broken, every stronghold torn down, every chain ripped off right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And you are now free. Free to obey this word. Free to live for him. Free to serve and love him with all your heart. With no more bondage in your life. No withdrawals. No monkey on your back. No regrets in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Thank you, Lord. And so, of these, Lord, that you love and adore so much and brought them here today with purpose, another kind of bondage. They're prisoners. Prisoners in their emotions, their hearts, their spirits, their minds. They've been told they got PTSD and ADHD and all of these other things, depression, anxiety, Prisoners, Lord. And you want your people free in you. And we declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. PTSD gone right now in Jesus. Precious and mighty name. ADHD gone right now in Jesus' name. Depression gone right now in Jesus' name. Anxiety gone right now in Jesus' name. Bipolar gone right now in Jesus' name. Schizophrenia gone right now. In Jesus' name. Paranoia gone right now in Jesus' name. Multiple personality disorder gone right now in Jesus' name. I don't know any more names, y'all. If they gave you any other names or if they told you you got multiple names going on, all that gone right now in Jesus' precious and mighty name, you are now free. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And some of these. Oh, Lord Jesus, that you love and adore so much and you drew them here today with purpose. They're in a very dark place and they don't want to come out. They're scared to come out. They're tired of being hurt. They don't want to come out, Lord. But you know each and every one of them by name and you know exactly the location of that dark place. Lord Jesus, go to each one of them. Enter into that dark place. You are the light of the world that men would not stumble. The glory of God, the bright morning star. As you enter in, Lord, it ain't dark no more. Lend down that nail-pierced hand. Help them to their feet, Lord. Into your loving and caring and powerful and protecting and life-saving arms, miracle-working arms. Squeeze them, hold them tight, hug them, whisper in, the e in their ears, I got you, child. You're with me now, and I refuse to let you go. Walk them out of that place into a new life lit up by you, Lord Jesus. And the church said together, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Are we enjoying Holy Week, y'all? Stay tuned for tomorrow. Amen. And in the meantime, can you do us a tiny, teeny, weeny little favor? Have a good day, a nice day, a wonderful day, a glorious day, a magnificent day, a marvelous day in Christ Jesus, unless you've already made other plans. Have a nice one.